In this example, we're going to find the relative extrema of the function in terms of x and y equals to 3e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay, so first we need to find the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of f with respect to y. And then we need to set both of those equals to we need to set both of those equal to zero. So okay, so partial f with respect to x. Okay, again we treat y as the constant and treating x as the variable. So this is going to give us three okay times e. So think of this as e to the u. Okay, where u is minus x squared plus y squared. So this is going to be uh, minus x squared plus y squared. Times the derivative of x squared plus y squared. Okay, using the chain rule. So that's going to be minus, uh, taking the derivative respect to x, so that's going to give us minus 2x here. Okay. Now we need to find the partial of, the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So treating x this time as a constant and y as the variable. So we're going to get 3 times e to the power of minus x squared plus y squared times the derivative of the argument of u, I'm sorry, the argument e with respect to y. So that's going to be minus 2y. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and set both of these uh, equal to 0. So first let's simplify these though. So this is just minus 6x e to, let's move this one downward. Okay. So this is going to be minus 6x times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay, and over here, this gives us minus 6y times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay, so setting both of these equal to 0, okay, we're going to get Uh, in this case, so e e to this, um, just think about e in terms of x or right e to the x. It's never it never goes below the x-axis. So in general, e to the right, so for e to the power of x squared plus y squared, that will never um, that will never have a um, that will never be equal to zero. Okay. All right. So the only way that this can be zero is if if x is zero. Okay. So that's just coming directly from here. Um, and then for the partial of f with respect to y. Again, same reasoning. Okay. E to the minus e to the minus x squared plus y squared can never be zero. Okay, so that means y has to be zero. Okay, so we found our coordinate. Now we need to uh, substitute that into d. Okay, um, but before that, we need to find the second order partials. Okay, so partial of f squared with respect to x squared it's going to give us okay so we so we go back to the partial f with respect to x okay so we need to use the product rule here okay so we're going to take the derivative of the first part so that's going to give us minus 6 e to the minus x squared plus y squared and then taking the derivative of the second part, we're going to get e to the, okay, so it's going to be plus, so plus, uh, plus e to the minus x squared plus y squared times, okay, 
Okay, times minus 2x. Okay, that's using the chain rule. And then we need to multiply that by minus 6x. Okay. So simplifying this, this is going to give us minus 6e to the power minus x squared plus y squared plus 12x squared times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay. So now we need to find the partial of f squared with respect to y squared. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We have the partial f with respect to y. Okay, so we have that here. Oops. Okay. So that's going to give us, okay, so again, we need to use the product rule here. So we're going to have minus 6 times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay, plus, okay, e to the negative x squared plus y squared times Okay, so we take the derivative, we're taking the derivative of this argument with respect to u. So that's going to give us minus 2y. And then we have to multiply it by the first uh, part, minus 6y. Okay. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, so let's simplify this. This is going to be minus 6e to the negative x squared plus y squared. And then we have plus 12y squared times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay. All right, so now okay, we need one more component. We need the mixed partials. Okay, so we need the partial f with respect to x and then take the derivative of that result with respect to y. So going back up here, okay, we have the partial f with respect to x. Okay, so looking here now, okay. Um, okay, so we're going to take the derivative of that expression with respect to y. Okay. So since we have, we're taking the derivative with respect to y now, so the minus 6x is treated as a constant. So I just need to, we just need to focus on the exponential part. So this is going to give us minus 6x times e to the minus x squared plus y squared <coughs> times, uh, we're going to take the derivative of the x squared plus y squared with respect to y. So that's going to give us minus 2y. Okay. And then let's go ahead and simplify this. This is going to give us um, positive 12xy times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Well, minus is outside, so technically it would be minus x squared minus y squared. Okay. All right. So now we need to, okay, uh, we need to plug those into d. Okay, all right, so D, okay, so D is going to be, okay, so we're going to have partial of F squared with respect to X squared, evaluate this at our point, our point was zero, zero. times the partial of f squared with respect to y squared. And then evaluate the, oops. Oh. Okay. All right, sorry about that. I had to plug in the charger. Okay, so this is gonna be, uh, where were we? Uh, Z F. so the partial of f 
with respect to x and then the partial of that with respect to y. So you get zeros. Plug that, in, evaluate that for at the origin at or at the point that we found, which is at the origin. So we're going to square this. Okay. Now we're going to get. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Let's go ahead and let me. So this was, this was f x x. Okay. And the result here was the partial of f squared with respect to y squared. Okay, so plugging zero, plugging, letting x be zero and y be zero, uh, we're going to get, okay, so this part here where the x squared is going to be zero, and then that's going to give us uh, minus six. Okay. Okay, so this part here. This is going to give us minus 6 and then times plugging in 0, uh, plugging in the 0, 0 into the partial f squared with respect to y squared will give us, uh, will also give us minus 6. Okay. And then plugging in the partial f with respect to y, so plugging this and plugging the origin to here, it's going to give us 0. Okay. Okay, so simplifying this, this is going to give us d equals to 36. Okay. And that is strictly bigger than 0. So according to the theorem, okay. So d is strictly bigger than 0, and now we have to see whether the partial of f squared with respect to x squared is is positive or negative. Okay. Um so let's see. So in this case, because the partial f of x or partial f squared with respect to x squared is negative. Okay. Alright, so so we have that d is equal to 36 and and this is negative. Okay, so therefore, so d is strictly bigger than zero and the partial f squared with respect to x squared is less than zero so that means there's a relative maximum okay okay so there's so therefore there's a relative maximum so the relative maximum is occurring at the value that we substitute 0 0 okay so the relative maximum at 0 0 okay so to find the to find the z value we simply substitute 0 0 back into the original function okay so evaluate the function at 0 0 and e so that's going to give us e to the 0 e to the 0 is 1 so therefore z right is going to be 3 Okay, so the relative maximum, okay, it occurs at zero, zero. So, oops. Okay. Occurs at the origin. And so the maximum, right, so the maximum is at, okay, so the maximum is z equals to 3. Okay. All right, so again, we substitute the the point we we got to 0 0, we found out that it was a relative maximum, and so we plug that back into the original function and that gave us a value of z equals to 3. Okay. All right, so the graph of this, if you're curious to what this graph looks like. Okay, let's go over here. So this is right, this is what it looks like. Okay. All right. So it has, you know, basically it has exponential, right? it has exponential behavior. If you're looking in the y direction, which is along the green axis here, and then looking at the x direction, it also has exponential growth. Okay. All right. So you can see there at the origin. So this is at the origin here. Um, you can see that there's a. This is occurring right at the 
uh, we have a maximum of z equals 3 at the origin. Okay.